everyone and welcome to Miss Asterix Biology. In this video I'm going to be going through the GCSE required practical for inhibition zone. So keep watching to find out all about how and why to follow a septic technique, how you then do the write-up and what the results show. Now in this investigation we're going to be looking at which antibiotic or you might be using other antimicrobials to see which is the most effective at killing a particular bacteria. So just a reminder that antibiotics, these are medicines that can treat bacterial diseases by killing the bacteria. And in our experiment we're going to be getting what's called inhibition zones and these are the clear areas around the antibiotic disc or whatever it is that you have put down where the bacteria that you grew has been killed by that particular antibiotic and if you have no inhibition zone that means that that antibiotic is ineffective or it does not kill that particular bacteria. Now whenever we grow microbes we have to make sure we are working aseptically and we follow what's called aseptic technique. And this is when we work in a way that's completely sterile and clean to make sure that we don't get any contamination on the Petri dish. So some examples are making sure that you clean down your working surface with disinfectant before you begin, but also at the end to make sure you don't then transfer that bacteria to other surfaces within the school. We wash our hands with soap before and after, before to make sure we don't contaminate the Petri dish and after so we don't contaminate the rest of the school. We work near a Bunsen burner and that's because air will be drawn upwards as it gets hot following the convection currents and then as it goes through the Bunsen flame that will kill any microbes in the air. As that air cools it will then go back down again and we'll get this circulation of air being sterilised. So if you work near the Bunsen burner, when you have to take your lid off, the air around you should be being sterilised. Any metal equipment we sterilise by putting into the Bunsen burner flame as well. And when you do have to open your Petri dish to put the antibiotic discs in and to put the bacteria in, as well as working near the Bunsen burner, try and only open the lid a little bit to reduce the chance of any microbes in the air landing on your plate. So aseptic technique is working, as we said, completely sterile. And this is so important because if you do get contaminations on your Petri dish, then the bacteria or maybe fungi that grows, it might actually outcompete the bacteria that you want to grow and examine. So it will be competing for the available nutrients in the agar jelly, the water available in the agar jelly, um, the space to grow or the new microbe might actually release chemicals that kill the bacteria you're growing. So let's watch the method then. First of all, you disinfect your work surface. Then we're going to light the Bunsen burner. I've washed my hands there with an antiseptic and antibacterial gel, and then labelling the Petri dish with my initials, the date and E. coli, because that's the bacteria I'm growing. I also split it into three so that we can see where to place the discs. Now we're going to put on the bacteria and straight away we are sterilizing the syringe. I've now got a sterile spreader and I'm spreading it evenly all over the plate. I'm working near the Bunsen burner where the sterile air is. Next then we're using sterile forceps to put our three antimicrobials on in the three positions that we've already sectioned out on the Petri dish. Sterilise again, just in case you've got any E. coli on. And then we're putting tape just on two sides so oxygen can still get in for the bacteria and then aseptic technique at the end. So let's have a look at the results then. Unfortunately, my ones here, the bacteria didn't actually grow enough to be able to see these really clear inhibition zones. So here was my antibiotic. There was a slight inhibition zone, but you just can't really see it in this picture. And there was a slight one around my antiseptic. Garlic, though, there was no inhibition zone. And in fact, even more bacteria started to grow around that. So we're going to use these results instead, because although it's just a diagram, it's useful to be able to practice the skill of the area of a circle and coming to a conclusion. 
So let's work out then the area of the inhibition zones. What you would need to do for this is use a ruler with millimetre markings on, and then from the very centre of your paper disc to the outer layer of your inhibition zone, you would measure to get the radius. Or if you're going to do the diameter instead, just make sure you are going directly through the middle of your paper disc. Once we've recorded those, we can then work out the area of the inhibition zone. It's a circle, so it's pi r squared. And just make sure that you do record all of your results in the same column to the same number of decimal places. So now we've recorded our results, you could then be asked to describe, explain, or come to a conclusion based on your results. Now the description of these results is where you are just saying the patterns of what you can see. So we could say descriptions like there is an inhibition zone around A, B and D, but not around C. We have the largest inhibition zone around D and the smallest around B, not including C, which had zero. That would be our description. Now, I've actually linked the conclusion and explanations together over here. So one conclusion could be that A, B and D are all effective at killing this particular bacteria. The explanation is because they all had inhibition zones, and that indicates that they had killed bacteria. Another conclusion is that antibiotic C does not kill the bacteria, and the reason we know that, this is our explanation, is because there was no inhibition zone around it. Finally, we could have the conclusion that D is the most effective antibiotic out of these four at killing this particular bacteria. And the explanation is it had the largest inhibition zone, which means it had killed the most bacteria. So that is it for this required practical. Hope you found it helpful. And if you have, give it a thumbs up.